What's going on, poor fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel, and today we're going to be discussing Port Adelaide's big 48 point win over the West Coast Eagles for round four, and what was a very, very good performance by our boys up at Metricon Stadium. And for Brad Evert's 250th game, what a great way to celebrate that. It's one certainly he will be able to remember. So let's get straight into it and have a look and see exactly what panned out. So Port Adelaide got the job done. It's a pretty good spot with the kick. Marshall's down there. Couldn't quite trap it in the hands. Off the deck, Ebert, in the milestone game. 250, one against the grain. Unfortunately, I couldn't watch the match live due to uh, playing a trial match myself. So when I uh, heard the scores, I was a little bit surprised. I will be honest, I didn't expect us to win that convincingly. I actually, half, a part of me actually thought, well, maybe we won't win at all. But to come out the way we did and perform... Um, such a well-executed game plan and such a well-driven um, game plan as well. You know, our mindset was just a was a real positive mindset from the outset. Um, we were just constantly at the Eagles all day. There were a little bit of patches where the Eagles were coming back, especially in uh, that third quarter and um, during the second quarter as well. There was a little bit of a time where we, maybe they'd be uh, they'd be coming at us, but. Collectively, as a group, there was no passengers on the day, and that's something I think we've um, missed over the last few years. Is the fact that we seem to have passengers even though we do win. And collectively, at the moment, I don't think there's a single passenger in our side, and we only made a couple of changes due to injuries throughout the last couple of weeks. And the consistency in the group at the moment is just fantastic to see. And whether or not someone doesn't quite stand up on the day, you know, someone else is going to. And I think that is the real positive um, of Port Adelaide at the moment is exactly that, is that consistency as a group and um, the strength of uh, our closeness and the relationships that we have. That's that's the core ingredient at the moment for Port Adelaide and it's great to see that we can execute that on the field as well as off it. I've got to kick off um, this with talking about Charlie Dixon. Now, we've heard so much good things over the first bit of preseason that he was finally getting a full preseason under his belt. He was clunking everything in uh, training, and he was just looking fit and firing, training with Chad Corns. He comes out into the first uh, internal trial back in February, and we're all thinking, geez, what's Charlie going to do today? What what What's he capable of? And he took it. He took on the game. He was just magnificent to watch and for him to transfer that into form through the Marsh series didn't uh, play round one but to come back in the showdown against Fremantle and now to bag six goals against West Coast who look last year were probably were obviously one of the better teams in the comp and their defensive unit is so good uh, that not a lot of teams actually keep big bags of goals against them so for Charlie Dixon to do so mind you they didn't have McGovern and I think West Coast did miss him uh, a little bit, especially with those quick forward entries that Port Adelaide had, uh, which allowed Mar Marshall and Westhoff to play a little bit more freely uh, around the contest and up the ground. To have Charlie just demand the football in inside our attacking 50. And look, yeah, the game plan's simple. It's very predictable. We'll kick it and bang it on Charlie's head. And if he clunks it, it's an absolute bonus. But if he doesn't, he's going to bring it to the ground. He's going to create a contest. And it's going to give our smalls the best opportunity. You know, Rosie Butters, um, Robbie Gray, if he's down there. You know, even the likes of Westhoff are going to crumb the ball. Our midfielders are going to be around there to sell, uh, to set up um, another opportunity, another forward entry. So it's things like that that really create um, a predictable and simple game plan that a lot of teams do adapt to. But to have Charlie and his presence at the moment, King Charles is what we've nicknamed him. Dwayne Russell with that quote. What was the quote? The quote was, you don't buy green bananas the week you're playing on Charlie Dixon. If that's if that doesn't make sense to you, then that's basically you need to be ready to go or green bananas. There's no point waiting for them to ripen up. So just an amazing performance from Charlie Dixon. Best on ground by country mile to have 15 touches, multiple contested marks and six goals for a bloke that doesn't normally kick a big bag. See that in a Port Adelaide Guernsey. Ticking that one off, that's for sure. Here's Connor Rosie down the wing, spears the pass, hoping for Butters. Landed like a cat, picked up the Sharon, heads to Boak. 
dances inside and launches goal square. Dixon, Dixon, Dixon. Most miles yep. West Coast. He's the one that has to get back to try and help out defensively. For number six. And in modern day terms, it is a bag. And he might have a career best coming in this last four minutes. Brad Evert's 250th game. Personally for me, he produced what he has done for 250 games in that performance yesterday. His ability to continu continuously attack the football, attack the opponent, and um, pressurise uh, up forward is what he's been capable of doing forever. Um, his disposable obviously has been questionable, but his ability to win the football is just second to none. And I think the way he's just uh, been able to constantly keep it at that level for so long in 250 games, he produced it again against the Eagles yesterday. And it's just a credit to him. I think collectively uh, he'll be very pleased with that performance. And uh, it's a credit to him. So special job for Brad Ebert. So well done. I want to touch on the defensive unit, uh, starting with Hamish Hartlett. I think his game yesterday was the best of the season so far for him. 22 touches, the highest Port Adelaide possession getter on the day. His constant ability. To, he's just flying on the radar at the moment. Our defence as a collective is just brilliant. It's the best in the league. Um, but I think you know him and the likes of even Houston now chipping in back there. Trent McKenzie's just been unreal. His first quarter against Darling was sensational. And that spoil going back with the flight is just something defenders craft. That's a defender's craft, right? There. You don't have... You have that... You have that in your mindset, but you never really can pull that off. And when he did that, you know he's in good touch. And it was just our ability to shut down Kennedy, Ryan, uh, Darling, and you know all their other smalls and tools that are roaming about. I mean, their midfield did run away a little bit. Gaff and Shuey and uh, Kelly did get a few possessions, but they were not dangerous possessions. Um, I think even though you had the likes of Boak get 19, Ollie Wines only had 15, 16. Um, and DBJ, and those types that are very high possession getters for Port Adelaide, they didn't have as much. They were damaging with less possessions. So if you can have that effect on a game day where you don't even need 20 possessions to have a high impact on the game, then I think um, you're doing a better job than, say, someone that gets 30 possessions but doesn't do as much with them. And look, 30 is a great number, but when you have 19, like Travis spoke, and have so many goal assists and score involvements like that, it's still... It just has that better effect on the team and just creates a whole dynamic, whole new dynamic uh, when you're trying to attack for the footy. Now, a lot of teams um, obviously keep slipping up going through this period. And Port Adelaide do sit top of the ladder very comfortably at the moment. And I can see, you know, a lot of teams, as I said, they're slipping up. They're not beating teams they should. And it's a very un unpredictable season. So for us to be consistent and beat the teams we should... You know, obviously, Gold Coast round one, they were, you know, pre-COVID, they were not uh, as good as they were now, and that's fine. Uh, the Crows are obviously rebuilding, and we played a Fremantle side that's pretty uh, consistent, just not getting the results they'd like, and to play a West Coast that's very high quality, and they're going to have multiple opportunities um, throughout a game of footy to attack and constantly put you under pressure. So for us to withhold that pressure and just... Beat a team that I think still has that respect about them that they are a top quality side in a bit of a fawn slump. And that's the thing. That was the main thing coming into this week for Port Adelaide is to take advantage of a good team that's having a bit of a form slump and don't put them back into form because that's something that Port Adelaide always seemed to do. And to see that and to see our performance be so consistent, um, I think that's, that's, that's that, I don't know, that's something to me that says we're in this now. We're not just bidding up the kids. We are taking every opportunity we can get. We've got Brisbane next week now. That's another big opportunity to say, hey, we're here. This is Port Adelaide and this is what we're doing and this is how you're going to try and beat us. But we're going to take you on anywhere, anytime, anyhow. It does not matter. Dwayne Russell said that at the end when the siren went. So this is Port Adelaide at the moment and 4-0, it's a very, very good cushion to set up the next 13 games, however they pan out, however they're scheduled, we now got a very good cushion to leap off of going into the uh, the, the meaty part of the season. Well, there you have it, Paul fans. That is the review of round four against the Eagles, a 48-point 40 win starring Charlie Dixon's six goals. King Charles 
as he's been newly nicknamed. Look, it was a simple performance, I think, from Port Adelaide to sum it up. You know, we didn't do too anything drastic. We just stuck to our structures, played the game so well, and our defensive unit was just so good. Um, and to see Charlie kick six goals is amazing. So I definitely tick for approval for that one. And we're certainly looking good going into next week against the Lions. It's going to be an even better performance. But right now, I'm going to soak it up and enjoy what's been a very, very good weekend for Port Adelaide. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide content. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of round four and this week's game. And what should we do for round five? My name is Anthony. And as always, can the